Aloha, everyone. Thank you for um, joining us. Uh, we will be getting started in just a few minutes. Uh, we're going to just wait uh, to see if more people trickle in. Um, but if you haven't muted yourself yet, uh, please mute yourself uh, so we don't receive any audio feedback. And we'll get started in just a few minutes. Thank you. Okay, uh, we're going to get started uh, just to be respectful of everyone's time. Aloha and thank you for joining us. My name is Jacob Aki and I'm the Director of Communications for the Hawaii State Senate. Um, and tonight uh, we are being hosted by Senator Joy San Buenaventura uh, for her 2021 end of session town hall. Uh, Senator San Buenaventura represents Senate District 2, which includes the areas of Puna and East um, and we're so happy that you folks are able to join us. Uh, this meeting is also being streamed live on uh, Facebook, um, on our Hawaii State Senate page, as well as on Senator's Facebook page. Um, so without further, uh, without further ado, uh, we're going to get started and we'll hand the floor off to Senator San Buenaventura. Senator, the floor is yours. Okay. So aloha. So this is my first year as a state senator. Um, we, as Jacob has said, uh, please keep your to make audio quality as clear as possible. Keep your mics muted throughout the meeting. And as in other sessions, um, we will be having the video of this recording of this video on our website for future. Um, for future look back for those who are unable to be with us today. So um, next slide. So I'm the Senate Chair of Human Services. I'm a member of the Consumer Protection and Health Committee. Next slide. I am a Senate co-convener of the Keiki Caucus. I'm a member of the Kupuna Caucus, Hawaiian Caucus, Women's Legislative Caucus, Progressive Caucus, Hawaiian Island Caucus, and Filipino Caucus. So these are basically um, subject matter interested people who come and want to know what we're doing for them in the legislature. Um, next slide. So I want to start, you know, before in my other town halls, I just go around and tell you what I've done. And I don't really give much opportunity for a question and answer type. So a lot of you have seen my, um, my newsletter. Um, I don't know whether or not you've seen my newsletter. Okay, sorry. Um, but anyway, uh, if not, uh, and you'd like to have a copy of the newsletter mailed to you or emailed to you, please let um, John know. His email address is j.honda at capital.hawaii.gov and we will do our best to email you um, a newsletter. But basically though, for those of you who have seen the newsletter, there were a survey was sent out as to what the issues you want um, addressed in the legislature and what you felt was important in the community. Um, and I'm just gonna read it out because we don't have a slide for it, but basically the most important issues at the time was economy jobs, um, crime at 23%, 20% crime and drug abuse, 18% was COVID-19 related, 14% was housing squatters, 9% infrastructure, same with roads, utilities, 5% environment, 2% climate change, and 1% TMT. Um, when we talk about the private road subdivision, which was one of my pet projects for a number of years, but hasn't gotten much traction in the House and the Senate, and, and we, asked, um, we asked whether or not we, we have miles of private roads and subdivisions that are not maintained, 
Are you satisfied with the association or entity that maintains the roads in your subdivision? And 58% no, 42% said yes. Okay, and then of course we talked about reviving the economy and the like. But surprisingly from the questions that were emailed or mailed to me, um, nobody, even though there was a lot of, I mean, dissatisfaction with the subdivision and associations, no one emailed me um, those questions for today's town hall. Next slide. The biggest questions, next slide, was of course Highway 130. Is there any update? These are the questions on what is being done to alleviate Highway 130 traffic. Is there planning being done for emergency evacuations? Hurricanes, lava, et cetera, and will money from the federal rescue plan be appropriated to Highway 130? So let me answer the last question first, the easiest. And the answer is no. The federal rescue plan was mostly COVID related. The infrastructure bill that the Biden and the legislators um, in the congressional legislators, the $1.3 trillion infrastructure bill Hopefully that will have some money on Highway 130. I don't know the details yet. I believe it's still being hashed out in Congress. And as soon as that is hashed out, we will let you know. But the ARPA funds, which is the rescue plan, that's the one where you got your um, tax refunds on. That's the one that provided some in money for unemployment, for SNAP benefits, for the rent supplements that you folks have seen that the county um, is pushing for to help, to help landlords and prevent the evictions when the moratorium ends, those are ARPA funds. Um, it's usually human services type related, okay? So the second to last question, is there any planning done for emergencies, evacuations, hurricanes, lava? You know, surprisingly, um, Last month, the Big Island delegation went to Hyema um, over here in Diamond Head and asked them specifically, why is it that they're not publishing shelters? And I mentioned the 2018 lava eruption. At that time, I remember when there were just earthquakes before Leilani um, erupted, Leilani states erupted. And I asked at that time whether or not there were going to be shelters available. And no one could answer my questions. Okay, so when last month, when, when the Big Island delegation went to Hyema here on Diamond Head, and I asked that same question, why is it we're not getting any shelter information? And why is it that when people were are being told to shelter in place, especially now at the start of hurricane season. Why is there no published shelter potential? And the answer is because sometime about five, six years ago, the responsibility for shelter publication went to the counties. So it's like we're passing the buck, but I'm gonna go talk to our um, county civil defense and see whether or not they have any shelter evacuation plans and the like. And um, admittedly, we don't have the monies to always fully stock these shelters, especially when we don't know for sure if a hurricane is going to hit, but at least there should be a place we can tell people to evacuate to when the time comes, okay? And I was, I, like I told them, I was very unhappy at the time when the lava erupted um, over in Leilani in 2018, May 2018, all they did was basically with bullhorns tell people to evacuate without telling people where they can evacuate to. So hopefully um, we can do better than that. Okay, is there any, oh, I'm sorry, is there any update on what's being done to leave Highway 130 traffic? Basically um, my CIP on, on the right turn on red on shower, um, pass through the legislature. Every time we try for a four lane um, road to go between KL to Pahoa, which was on the STIP, which is the State Transportation Improvement Plan, has been in the State Transportation Improvement Plan since 2012. 
it has since been usurped to do safety, such as the roundabouts and traffic. So um, anybody who was on my Facebook page or who are subscribes to my e-newsletter was told to fill out that survey that, that was due this past Monday, last week, Monday, um, to fill in and say that Highway 130 should be a priority because it, I looked at yesterday's state transportation improvement plan and Highway 130 is no longer, the four lane is no longer in the state transportation improvement plan project. For those who want to know, the state transportation improvement plan is the next five years of what they intend to do with the state highways in the state of Hawaii. Um, hopefully we can put get that back on. Next slide. What, how, what can residents can do to give feedback about how to improve the traffic congestion for Puna commuters? Okay, so once a year, sometimes twice a year, that HDOT conducts STEP, State Transportation Improvement Plan, town halls. And if you subscribe to my newsletter, I tell people about, or on my social media, I tell people about where those town halls are. Um, recently, probably because of the whole lava flow, um, you know, people are suffering post-traumatic stress from the post COVID and the post um, lava flow disasters, uh, hardly anybody in Pune have shown up. And when you have barely a handful of people show up for those state transportation improvement plan town halls, they assume you folks are happy with the way it is, okay? I always show up and I always try to say my piece of what I believe my community wants, but I'm just one person. It really helps when people show up and people do surveys. So that is really how the Department of Transportation is able to get feedback. That was how we were able to, since 2012 until recently, put the four lane um, project on the state transportation improvement plan. That was how I was able to get monies for that four lane project. Um, however, because we have to, our state transportation uh, DOT is dependent upon federal monies. Okay, our gas taxes are not enough, okay? We, we rely heavily on federal monies in order to do our highways. But because we are dependent upon federal monies, we have to comply with their safety standards. And that required siphoning off some of the money we had projected for the four lane highway into the Pahoa roundabout, into the Ainaloa roundabout. And I think um, next, the next possible roundabout is either Orchid land, but that's not in the state transportation improvement plan project that I saw, or um, the survey was talking about a light over at Kaloli with a four lanes, however, to Kaloli. So hopefully um, the four lane project is still in the works. Um, and basically it says people who drive it frequently have good insight into what caused the problems and which designs. Again, you should show up for those meetings and provide input when I send out surveys because that's the only way State Department of Transportation can figure out the community because they have to, listen to the opinions of 1.2 million people in the entire state. So in order to be heard above the 1.2 million, you need to um, respond to the surveys as well as show up for the meetings. Uh, next slide. Okay, some projects have been success stories like the Pahoa Roundabout. Yep, that was, it, it certainly was. So. Um, as well as somebody, the person who wrote this also talked about the repaving between Leilani and Pahoa, and that has worked. Um, of course, the Ainaloa roundabout was too small. The Pahoa roundabout cost four times more than the Ainaloa roundabout. Again, it was a question of monies. 
the whole roundabout was slated at 20 million or so. To, and the, the Ainaloa roundabout was about 5 million. So it's one fourth the price, one fourth the size, and um, a, it needs improvement. And I agree. I mean, I get caught up in the traffic too. So next slide. Okay, people complain about the new light on Highway 11. Um, the person who wrote this said, well, uh, shipment should have paid for the intersections of people to have lights at the intersection and exit out at the intersection um, right there by Shipman Park. You know, um, that was before I was in office and, and I agree. And usually um, as an attorney and I know developers are required to put in infrastructure and lights like the people, um, like at Hara store. Yeah, it, that new light that was there on Highway 11, that was required, uh, but in order for there to be the, the 7-Eleven before. So I know developers can be required to put in lights, but for some reason, Shipman was able to create that park without being dinged, without having to pay for the expense of the light. Um, I can't answer that question. And so now the, the new light at Highway 11 is causing problems. Um, all we can do is some, um, hopefully we can time that light so that it won't cause as much problems. I think uh, County Councilman Matt Kleinfelder and myself have been talking to HDOT about um, increasing or de decreasing the amount of cross traffic time, at least during rush hour uh, for that new light. So that hopefully it doesn't get backed up as much. Okay, next one was Highway 130 light at Shaw versus another roundabout. This person was complaining that there should have been a roundabout at Shaw instead of the light. Um, so I was part, I wasn't part, I was just a constituent of time of the discussion between the light at shower and the Pahoa roundabout. People who were really involved in the Pahoa roundabout know that there was a huge opposition to that Pahoa roundabout. And so there was really a cop. Those were the two major in problems, intersections with shower and the Pahoa roundabout area, Kahakai area, yeah? And so there was basically a compromise. You got a light at shower and a roundabout at Pahoa. And in fact, um, we did not know how great a success the Pahoa roundabout was by the time the shower light was built because the shower light was actually built first. Okay, if, pe if people know the timing of it, you will rem remember that. Um, left turn only lane into Kaloli. Um, I will make that suggestion. Again, the traffic engineers figure that, should figure that out. But I kind of agree that instead of having that merge there, uh, maybe create a left turn lane so that there, don't, there doesn't need to be the weird merge and then make a left turn for all the people making a left turn on Kaloli. And I agree a whole roundabout design was too small. I'll ask. You know, the big problem we have in during all of this time is we had a switch in district engineers. The district engineer is the person who is in charge of the highway, of the state highways for the entire island. And uh, we had Panam who pushed for the four lanes. He retired. We had Don Smith who pushed for the roundabouts. She left for Texas or somewhere back in the mainland. And now we have Harry who needs to be refreshed as to what the problems are in Pune. So we're educating him and hopefully the, the next designs will be better. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, um, you get back up. If you have any questions regarding um, highway traffic, email us or go, go into the state transportation improvement program um, survey and we can email that to you, okay? Next slide. 
lots of problems regarding abandoned vehicles, what's the policy removing them. I was just at a um, neighborhood watch. County is responsible for it. And there is a county non-emergency number of 935-3311. 935-3311 to report abandoned vehicles, okay? So if you notice, they actually moved the abandoned vehicles after, you know, it may take one or two weeks, but it actually does get removed. It's not there forever like it used to be. So they are moving it out. The biggest problem, if, if you folks remember back in early 2000 or so, we didn't have the abandoned vehicle problem because um, we were able to ship they were, the salvage um, places here on Oahu was willing to buy. And in fact, if you live on Oahu, you can sell your bank, you know, your rundown vehicle for some cash. So you don't need to leave it on the side of the road. However, um, the shipping charges, if you remember during COVID, um, Young Brothers Inter Island shipping went up 40%. So the people who, used to deal with abandoned vehicles can no longer make any money. So now we are relying upon the county. Um, the state has given them, and they've got some federal ARPA funds um, in order to be able to deal with it. And they are dealing with it, but you know, it's the police dealing with it. So instead of fighting crime, they have to do this juggling. And I was just told that even though the county had allocated and budgeted for um, at least two other community police officers in Puna, uh, they couldn't, they can't fill it. They, people are resigning or retiring and they just can't seem to keep enough officers. So um, let's be good to our police officers because they have to deal with abandoned vehicles as well as, as well as our pets. And you folks know what happened to Rainbow Rangers recently. They just lost their contract and now they have to deal with um, when, when there are abandoned pets or stray animals, our police or beleaguered police officers who have to deal with everything else have to deal with that too. So um, be good to them, but, um, and be patient. Okay, next slide. Okay, wild pigs. Okay, yes, we do have a serious problem. Okay, gotta work with the county. Um, the state used to have pig traps, but people, and we would, the Department of Land Natural Resources would lend out pig traps, but people would not return the pig traps. So after a while, um, you know, they stopped lending them out. Um, hunters, you know, hunters are not allowed to hunt in residential areas. And the question is whether or not HPP, a lot of Puna are considered residential areas. Uh, it's a chicken and egg kind of thing because people don't want um, people with guns around the neighborhood, right? In order to be able to hunt. It's something that we need to work on. Uh, every year we try to give some money to the Department of Ag to have you know, to be able to license maybe a small group of trained hunters who don't, who know not to know to shoot down instead of across so that it'll be safe and more traps. And um, hopefully we can, we can get some more, some money next year in order to be able to get this pig trapping and to limit the size of the pig problem. By the way, um, we have tried to introduce a no limit hunting for pigs. Um, hunters don't like that. They want to be able to limit pig, I mean, the, the number of pigs being hunted down. So it's one of those things we gotta, we gotta work on with the community. Next slide. Okay, so there are people who don't like money going into rebuilding the roads like Highway 137 in Punamakai. Okay, so my constituents are not just, it used to only be Punamakai, Lower Puna area. My constituents are also Upper Puna, and this is from an Upper Puna person um, who doesn't see 
why we keep putting tax dollars to rebuilding um, like Highway 137, Highway 132, areas that are, uh, that are prone to lava inundation. So if you notice all those rebuilding monies, the state gave 60 million, that was my bill, HB 190 back in 2019, right after the lava flow. We gave the money to the county for the county to decide what to do with the monies. A lot of those, and they did surveys of the communities as to what should be done with the monies. And yes, Highway 137, Highway 132, they found that they could rebuild those with very little state monies or county monies because a lot of it was um, matched with federal monies. And a lot of those rebuilding projects, except for the Pohiki boat ramp, are county driven. They had community meetings. They just had a reactivate Puna meeting, I think last month. Those are the, you know, if you have problems with how we spend our money, that is how you can complain, okay? But right now, the county has approved these subdivisions. They did not condemn it and people have a right to live there. Um, so uh, I could go longer into that, but this is only a one hour session and there are more questions. Um, we can do a more in-depth discussion about that later on, but basically, there, and there is still a lot of people who live in lava inundated areas. So, you know, they may, they may not be able to get insurance for it, but um, the county from the monies we have given them, they are basically backing up the subdivisions that they had approved and they're able to get federal monies to rebuild those areas. Okay, federal unemployment, yeah, next, next slide. So somebody is complaining that we should not continue to pay federal unemployment benefits because it prevents people from going back to work and that's, there's a labor shortage, it's hurting business and slowing our state's economic um, recovery. Okay, so what we have done is the Department of Labor is basically requiring people to go back and apply. You need to have at least like three job applications out or um, requests out in order to keep getting unemployment benefits. I know some states have cut it off, but those states that have cut it off have been challenged in court because these are federal monies and the federal the feds decide what to do with the monies and not for the state to decide. So if you have a problem with that, complain to our congressional district, um, congressional office legislators, um, that is Congressman Kai Kahele, Congressman Ed Case, Senator Schatz and Senator Hirono as to what they're doing with the federal monies. But um, the reality is that yes, we do have a labor shortage. Uh, we, and I don't think it has actually been shown that people are too lazy to go back to work. People want to go back to work. People are scared though. And what happened during the pandemic was that a lot of support systems like childcare that workers were relying on ended up closing shop. So that is one of the things we need. If we want people to go to work, we need to be able to give them the support like having childcare available so that they will have they will have a place to be able that they know is safe for their kids to be able to be left at while they go back to work. Remember, school hasn't really started up work. I mean, school hasn't really started up either. So until we start getting the schools back in so that people will then know that their kids are safe so that they can go back to work, it's gonna be really difficult to get working parents to go back to work. Um, we're getting there and hopefully um, we can continue. Next slide. Vaccinations, government employees, is it true? No, I don't know. It's probably one of those social media um, myths. 
The governor has not required vaccinations. I don't know any department that has required com, um, vaccinations. Um, so, of course, each hospital, though, has its own policies as to whether or not to require it. And my understanding is nursing facilities because they don't want to get sued by um, people who catch COVID. Um, they can require it. And there is no um, right to be employed um, in a high-risk area like a nursing home um, if you're unvaccinated. Okay, next slide. So um, someone is, is saying that there's an alarming disconnect between jobs, economy, and environment, climate change, more educational clarity needs to be promoted to the general public. These are not separate issues. More people in the state need to see them as one and the same issue. Our survival depends upon it. Okay, you know, Hawaii's already leading this, leading the rest of the country um, in addressing climate change. And um, I don't know what more we can do about that. In fact, we were the first state to sign the Paris Accord. Um, we had just signed three high, um, energy bills that basically um, allows for and subsidizes um, electric buses. So as well as um, pushing for more electric chargers infrastructure in the state. So, so we're moving towards that. And we in fact passed a bill that requires people selling seaside, oceanside, coastside um, property to disclose to potential buyers that it that whatever it is that they're buying may be subject to, to climate change and maybe later be inundated. And I think they are looking at when, when that bill got passed, we're looking at like Waikiki, you know, um, Makai side of Alawai Canal, a lot of that's gonna be inundated real, um, in the next half century or more. Okay, next slide. So, um, Bills introduced this session, as you could see, because we had a shortened session. Uh, there is a number of bills introduced from two, in 2017, 2,918 introduced. Bills that came to law 217, fast forward to this shortened session. Almost as much bills introduced, but significantly less passed because we had a shortened session. Um, 265 passed the legislature this session. Uh, Highest number of veto lists that the governor um, put out on June 21st. And today was the day we chose to override, at least the Senate chose to override at least five of the bills um, that he has chosen to, to veto. And these are SB 811 that requires the schools to make weekly reports of positive COVID-19, especially when kids are not being vaccinated. Again, parents need to be reassured that their kids are safe. So the legislator believe that these weekly reporting, because it's required anyway, that they do it publicly so that um, parents know whether or not their kids are safe. Okay, SB 1387, requiring microchipping of pets. That way, when we find lost and stole or lost pets, and I personally have had a pet stolen, that was, I think, a neighborhood neighbor in my in my subdivision back when I lived in Hilo didn't like my cat and basically dumped my cat half a, halfway across the island because there was no way my cat would have gotten there by herself. Um, the microchip saved my cat. I mean, I got my cat like three months later. But um, microchipping of pets that way we don't need to. Euthanize pets if they are in fact pets, okay? SB 404, electioneering communications. Basically, this is for people who, you know, when you are new to running for office, there are multiple requirements about filing um, electioneering connections, what you spend, who, do, who donated. 
We already are required almost monthly, especially during the election year to disclose all of our donations and all of our um, of what we spend our money on. Okay, and you folks see the headlines whenever th those occur. The people who screw up uh, and get dinged most on electioneering communications are, are really the new, those new candidates who don't realize that there is a second um, requirement to disclose. And so in order to provide uniformity and so that we don't, we are able to incentivize new candidates. We did away with the second electioneering communication that's required basically within 24 hours of buying a newspaper ad, you're supposed to do a disclosure in addition to the monthly disclosures. Um, and that, that 24 hour, um, requirement is where a lot of new candidates keep screwing up on and keep getting fined by the campaign spending commission. So um, SB 404, we did away with that. SB 263, Hawaii made, we moved it from Department of Agriculture because it's not only Kona Coffee, Kau Coffee, um, that is Hawaii made, you know, we, Look at the pop-up makeke, right? During Merry Monarch, we do clothes, we do perfumes, we do other things. So Hawaii Made is moved from um, Department of Agriculture to Department of um, Economic Development so that we can really promote the Hawaii Made brand. And I'm not quite sure why the governor vetoed that, but um, we overrode his veto. In HB 862, Hawaii Tourism Authority funding removed from TAT. Um, this was heavily fought by the tourist industry and basically they were able to talk the governor into vetoing. We overrode that veto. Basically, a lot of people are saying we've had enough tourists already. And why is it that the Hawaii Tourism Authority has a set funding source that doesn't have to comply with procurement code? So, um, HB 862 basically overrode um, the governor's veto on that. Next bill, I mean, next slide. Hey, um, you folks who have seen my news list, I've seen it. We've got 20.5 million on cellular based vehicle to everything to increase broadband. Okay, so the big island is the only island that doesn't have a fiber ring. What does that mean? That means if connectivity is cut for some reason, like the hurricane or so, we don't have a secondary source from on the other side of the island in order to prop up our broadband. That's why when broadband goes down on the big island, it's very difficult for it to get back up, okay? So 20.5 million, hopefully in order to be able to um, have the fiber ring. Right now, the fiber ring is cut off at Volcanoes National Park. Hopefully we can get that um, going. And it goes basically using the state highway system. Um, okay, $10 million for a new library in Upper Puna. We already have the Lower Puna library um, design on the way. And so um, Puna is the size of all of, of Oahu, right? And Oahu has multiple libraries. Why can't Upper Puna have one? So um, 10 million is put aside to, um, for a new library. 1.3 million to reinstall right turn on red from shower. That was one of the questions. Why is it that it got removed? So people who, who drop and I commute, I use shower. If you notice, even though there is um, a shoulder there, the line of sight, especially when you're in a low car, doesn't allow you to safely make a right turn on red there. Okay, that's the reason because it slopes down. Uh, that's the reason why they, the HDOT says they need to buy land. I think probably mark up the highway in order to put back the right turn on red and probably move all of the markings as well as the utility poles um, in place. And I know that's a lot of money, 
but um, in order for the procurement and the budgeting and how that works, I believe HDOT probably overestimated for the same reason they overestimated the Inaloa roundabout and they always come in under budget because if we, if they estimated for the around this amount of what they believe it should cost and the bids are higher, then they cannot, they cannot award the contract. Okay, so you want it to, when you finally get the money, you want to be able to award the contract as fast as possible. So that's the reason why for there to be an, um, an overestimate. Uh, hopefully it's actually less than that and we could use the money for other things. Okay, like repaving. Um, 1.23 million to improve facilities at Mountain View, 250,000 for installation of split air conditioning in Keo Middle School and other ventilation improvements. Um, a lot of Honolulu uh, elementary schools got air conditioning and apparently there is a need for it in Keo Middle. Next slide. Okay, um, more CIP campus fire alarm, 265,000 in Keo High School. Pahoa High, 300,000 to be released in March. And what's not listed here is Pahoa Elementary. I keep pushing for the cafeteria. Hopefully this year we could have a master plan so we can budget for a cafeteria for Pahoa Elementary. Next slide. Budget highlights, we've got Youth Challenge. Those who believe um, that there wasn't gonna be any money this year, we made sure that there was money. Uh, 612,000 is what they needed because they could get the rest in federal matching. Two, um, almost 2.5 million for Hawaii Keiki program. And those are the ARPA funds, rental supplement program, $500,000. This is in the state. This is in addition to the county um, monies. And they got, they got millions. That's the reason why um, if you qualify, please apply for those county supplement, rental supplement. Apply for them as soon as possible because if they don't spend the money, it gets reverted back to the federal um, monies. And we don't, we, landlords who are already not getting paid rent are gonna end up having to evict you. So please apply for it. Next slide. Um, ARPA funds, 5.4 million went to general assistance for temporarily disabled. Um, it increased because of COVID-19 and we had to um, supplement them. 14.3 uh, million in basic homeless services. Hopefully that could keep up. And domestic abuse is in the rise, especially with um, the stay-at-home orders. So we really needed to restore um, social workers. Um, $1.7 million went towards that. Next slide. Um, federal tax credit, child care grants, 31 million. I really want to stress the fact that there are millions of dollars for child care. And if you need to have information on that, please email us, okay? Because there is money that goes directly to the individual who needs child care. There is monies that go directly to the child care provider. And there are county monies where the county can decide um, what to do with the monies. Okay, 1.5 million for 30 new conservation resource. Um, Doe care officers statewide, people complain that there isn't enough Doe care officers. Well, we budgeted for 30 more statewide. Um, so hopefully they'll be around, okay? Um, a lot of them, some of them are always needed, especially, on the, especially in Puna, yeah? Uh, Kehana Beach. The enforcement Kahana Beach are usually don't care officers. And 1.6 um, million for the Youth Conservation Corps program to provide youth with um, environmental stewardship opportunities. Next slide. So non sex trafficking of minors, we've increased the penalties. Um, I brought this up at the at the um, neighborhood watch, the, the highest concentration. And you know, there really are not that many child sex offenders in the state, especially like compared to like California or New York and or major metropolitan areas. But the few that we do have, 
the highest concentration is in, according to the FBI, is in like up, is in Pune, Upper Pune, really, area. So we've increased the penalties so that um, it makes it easier for the police officers to go after the um, the offenders for sex trafficking of minors. Um, we've removed the subminimum wage for disabled workers. So you're required, I mean, disabled workers should at least be paid a minimum wage if, and be paid for their experience and their skill and not be paid less because they're disabled. We've increased voter access by having automatic voter registration. So as soon as you apply for a driver's license, you're automatically um, registered. And SNAP benefits, we've removed the cap. So, and we've in, we have incentivized local purchasing with with um, double bucks um, expansion for um, local produce purchases um, for evictions. And I expect that there's going to be a tsunami of evictions as soon as the eviction moratorium ends. That's the reason why I keep pushing for people to apply for those rental supplements so that they don't get evicted. Um, we did pass HB 1376 that at least require mediation and hopefully um, a payment plan can be made um, between landlord and tenant before an eviction occurs. And SB 26244, we expanded the liability protection for donors of food so that um, if you donate food to like the food bank um, that you don't, or, or you should get or if you donate food that you don't get sued. Next slide. Um, we expanded telehealth recognition. Those who went to my telehealth um, town hall um, back in 20, last year, February 20, um, know that Medicaid and Medicare wasn't paying for telehealth. Um, COVID changed all that. We passed a bill that now says that insurance should pay for it continuously regardless of whether or not there is a COVID-19 um, emergency. SB 787, farm to school programs. We um, basically were requiring DOE to buy more local produce so that we can subsidize our, incent um, incentivize local farmers to produce local food and our students will be fed nutritiously local grown food. Um, SB HB 282, no cost emergency shelters for minors. We expanded that basically for runaways. That way there'll be um, places for them to go to and not be homeless on the streets. Um, HB 586 adds coercive control to the offense of abuse of family or household member. So there is a petty misdemeanor now if you, um, those of you who know domestic violence know that it usually starts by controlling everything about the, I mean, the, of the subservient spouse, yeah? Controlling who they see, controlling what they wear, controlling how they get out. Um, we Basically, we've added that, that that could be considered a crime, especially especially when it's coercive to the point where you are controlling and abusing their emotional and mental faculties, even though there wasn't any physical abuse yet, because we all know that that's the next step beyond um, coercive control. Uh, next slide. So we've gone through it pretty fast. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to call me. Um, and I believe, Jacob, do we have any chat questions now? Hi, Senator, we do. We actually have a few chat questions from uh, both Facebook and here in the Zoom call. Um, so maybe we'll go with the ones in the Zoom call first. Uh, Sally wrote, how do, how do our family members get through to UI if they were recently laid off? They are not able to get questions answered via phone system. Okay. So um, Sally, contact my office, okay? We have um, John Honda and Linda Mende have been, have been following up 
with unemployment for a number of our constituents. And we are gonna ask you some questions as to how it's, gonna, how it's going. Uh, and I agree that they don't have big island telephone numbers yet. They have Oahu telephone numbers for Oahu people to call. Um, and I have just finished talking to Director Stavio as to who is a Hilo girl, by the way, as to when they're gonna expand to the big island. And um, she's saying, hopefully when they are able to work out the kinks, they will be able to expand soon. But in the meantime, contact my office and hopefully we'll help you um, get your unemployment questions um, worked out. Okay. Um, the next question we have is from one of our viewers on Facebook and they asked if um, the Department of Education is mandating COVID vaccine um, for students returning in the fall. Uh, as far as I know right now, no, because I mean, the reality is a lot of students are not um, eligible for vaccinations. Um, private schools, however, may require it, okay, because that's not part of the state system. I believe the union at one time, HSTA, um, demanded it, you know, not only the teachers, but also the students be vaccinated. But as of right now, the Department of um, Education is not mandating vaccinations for students. But like I said, we did override that bill that required that if there is a positive, they're required to report. Um, so let's see what happens. Thank you, Senator. And one comment we do have in the chat uh, is is asking if you had already gone over the prospect of a pool in Kia'o. Okay, so um, I got a letter from a Mountain View um, student who wants a pool in Kia'o, a county pool. So county parks and rec determines whether or not they would have a pool. I mean, all the county pools in the island are county run and not state run. So I work with um, County Councilman Matt Kennelly Kleinfelder and see what the county parks and recs plans are for a county pool in KL. And if state lands are needed for that, then I'll talk to DLNR to see about, about um, substituting some state lands for it. But um, yeah, right now it's, it's county run. So I am going to, I mean, I hate to pass the buck, but that's where their authority is. It's county authority. And I don't like to step on county authorities. Um, Juliana, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, those are all of the audience questions we received in the chat, uh, both here in Zoom and on Facebook. Um, but if anybody on the call has any questions, uh, Please feel free to raise your virtual hand or put it into the chat, but we'll make one last call for any questions that you want to ask the um, Senator. So, um, like, I'm going to push again for my, if you want to be in my e-newsletter, if you want to have an e-newsletter, I do my best to put in not only what is happening in the state, but also whether or not there's any grants or benefits available um, to you. Like in my in my newsletter, I talked about the employment, the electronic broadband benefit that's $50 per, per, per household per month that um, you could have qualified for if you had applied. And we've also got supplement programs. Um, we could give those to you too, as well as let you know of any other um, meetings that we know of in the community that that, that any community um, association lets us know about. Okay, so let John Honda know, J. Honda, like the car at capital C A P I T O L dot Hawaii dot gov, if you want to be on my e newsletter. Okay, if there are no other questions, we just wanted to thank um, everybody for um, joining Senator here for her Senate District 2 virtual town hall. Um, a recording of this will be made 
available on our Hawaii State Senate Facebook page, as well as Senator San Buenaventura's Facebook page. But we'll also be um, uploading this town hall to our YouTube page at youtube.com slash Hawaii Senate. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Senator's office. Their contact information is on the screen, but their phone number is 808-586-6890. And her email is send san buenaventura at capital.hawaii.gov. Um, but if there's nothing else, I'll hand the floor back over to Senator for some closing remarks and we'll call it a wrap for this town hall. Senator? Yes, so thank you very much for attending my town hall. Hopefully next time it will be live like I used to do it. Um, what There won't be any town halls for a while until next year probably. Uh, but we will do our best to respond to your questions. And as you can tell by my reading them out, I do actually read the emails. I do actually read the um, the comments that are made, and I do. I, and that's the reason I do the surveys, is so that we are able to um, respond to your issues. Uh, there are going to be informational briefings, though. That's going to be open statewide if you're interested. Because I am human services chair, there are going to be two big informational briefings regarding homelessness and regarding the Ohana Zones project. Um, if you want to be informed about those informational briefings, um, let us know, and we will make sure that you get a link to it. Aloha. OK, thank you, guys. And uh, thank you so much. And we hope you all have a great uh, rest of your Tuesday evening. Take care, everybody. Aloha. Aloha.